The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloths, plus lots of other freebies which she places in the guests' bathrooms. Funny, you haven't seen any of this stuff in your bathroom. The front of the cart contains objects not visible from the backside. Rolls of toilet paper, itty bitty bars of soap, washcloths, and minuscule bottles of hand cream. Don't whiz on the maid's cart. Fresh toilet paper is always necessary, especially at a nice resort like this. Oh, nice and soft. She was probably going to give you a fresh roll of toilet paper today anyway. Don't be greedy. Others may want to wipe sometime too. You consider using the center cardboard cylinder of a roll of toilet paper as a megaphone, but decide that would be too embarrassing even for you. Wait until you're in your bathroom. La Costellata's white washcloths are elegantly engraved with a large flowing H. Maybe they got them on sale. This washcloth feels almost like a bath towel, only much smaller and thinner. I'll bet the maid was gonna leave me a washcloth. Isn't there a one washcloth limit? You coyly wipe your mouth on one of the washcloths on the cart and hope no one saw you. How impressive! Imported oat brand soap. Soon there will be bran in everything. The soap feels slightly powdery to your touch. Use this when you want to make a good impression. You already have some soap. Here's some hand cream. You can never tell when a little hand lotion might come in handy. Hand cream might be good for those itchy palms of yours. You already have enough hand cream. You just can't look at a bottle of hand cream without thinking about masturbation, can you? The maid's cart is filled with the usual towels and washcloths, plus lots of other freebies which she places in the guests' bathrooms. Funny, you haven't seen any of this stuff in your bathroom. The back of the cart contains objects not visible from the front. Toilet seat covers, complimentary dental floss, and bath towels. This shelf of the cart is filled with clean white terry cloth towels. These bath towels are made of the finest terry cloth, so fine you can almost see through them. I bet I could use a towel sometime. Leave some towels for someone else to filch. Herbert. A package of thin paper toilet seat covers rests on the cart. These toilet seat covers are kind of thin, but uh, if I don't put my full weight down, I'm sure they can last through one sitting. I can use these for tracing paper. One pack of toilet seat covers should last you an entire game. What a ritzy resort. They even give out complimentary dental floss. You carefully straighten up the piles of dental floss only to see them collapse into a heap again. I can always use some more dental floss. You already have a year-long supply of dental floss since you insist upon ignoring your dentist's good advice and flossing only when I have plenty of time as if your busy schedule prevents you from taking good care of your teeth. The ADA will never make you their poster boy. I just can't wait until I'm alone in my bathroom. 
What a luxurious place. Complimentary mint-flavored dental floss. You pull a length of dental floss from the container and prepare to work on those choppers. Being especially careful around your incisors, you rid your mouth of all dangerous plaque. Instead of running your mouth off at the floss, you might try running the floss through your mouth. Wrong end, Larry. Pure Aloe Vera Hand Lotion. Opening the hand cream, you rub a little around on the back of your hand. Ah, that feels soothing to your parched skin. You rub the aloe vera lotion into a few of those dry places on your knuckles. Your complimentary bar of impressive imported oat brand soap would be more impressive if it had come in a wrapper. But for an unwrapped bar of soap, it is impressive. Perhaps you could use this in your bathroom sink when you want to wash your hands. Sure, you could rub the soap all over yourself right now, but wouldn't you really rather wait until you're in the shower? If La Costellata was really thoughtful, they would have provided these in your bathroom instead of on that maid's cart. You don't really need a dicky. What? Made of thin white tissue paper. Whew. The roll of toilet paper is a delicate shade of off-white. It's called white. The toilet paper feels soft and user-friendly. Normally, one uses that when one's pants are around one's ankles. White is your favorite towel color. Well, technically speaking, it's your favorite absence of all colors, but... Mmm, soft, fluffy. How does Mrs. Lotta keep her laundry so nice? You furtively wipe a few drops of perspiration from your upper lip and hope that no cute babes have noticed. La Costellata's washcloths are so soft and fluffy. Not at all like yours back home. No one will ever know you wiped your forehead with that washcloth. From here, you can hear sounds emanating from the lobby through that open doorway to your left. The only door in this hall leads to the dining room. It's a popular door, but only at meal times, which are few and far between. This sculpture looks just like one you saw last week on Home Shopping Club. There's nothing behind the sculpture, but at least you're trying. You wouldn't carry this deformed sculpture around even if you were able to lift it. The sculptures here do not do interviews. Isn't that carrying artistic criticism a little too far, Larry? This sculpture is entitled, Jesse Helms Sewage. Evidently, another disgruntled National Council of the Arts non-grant winner. Wow, this carpet could make your eyes hemorrhage. You don't want to embarrass yourself by getting down on all fours and stroking the carpet here. Tempting as it may be. Feel free to leave the carpeting in place. It's so much more pleasant to walk on than the dirt, leaves, twigs and bones littering the ancient native burial ground this place was built upon. How odd. The carpet doesn't make a sound, and yet it's the loudest carpet you've ever seen. 
This isn't indoor-outdoor carpeting. Surprisingly enough, La Costellata planted artificial flowers throughout the hotel. Wouldn't you think with all these windows and skylights, this resort would have real flowers in their halls? That accomplished nothing. But the flowers seem to enjoy it. They're not real, they don't need water. This stainless steel window frame only looks bent. Rubbing your hand up and down the stainless steel of the window frame, you notice that it feels as smooth, cool, and firm as a gymnast's thigh. If you take this window frame, who knows what could happen? Why, the fourth floor might collapse onto the third floor, which could crash onto the second floor, which will crumble onto your head. You'll escape injury, of course, but why bother? I wonder if I were to whisper into this window frame, then ran all the way down the hall and held my ear against the frame way down there, if I could hear my own voice echo. Huh? Thinking of what happens when you stick your tongue on a cold piece of metal, you shudder and decide not to try something like that here with a cold stainless steel window frame. This hallway extends through the eastern wing of the building and continues east and west. You, on the other hand, appear to be wandering aimlessly in all directions. It feels hairy. Oh, wait a minute, that's your palm. Guess it's time for another trim. You can't take that. It's an integral part of the hallway. Since there's nobody around, you practice a few of your favorite pickup lines. Hey, baby, I think I loves you. I promise you, sweetheart, I'll try not to ruin you for other men. Why, yes, I have had it tested, and it's clean as a whistle. Waving it around the room won't help. Have you tried steroids? La Costellata got raked over the coals because it wasn't accessible enough. So they added this banister, <laughs> big spenders. Yes, the banister feels quite safe and secure. Boy, are you paranoid. It's firmly affixed to the wall, which is the point of a banister, isn't it? The banister is strangely mute. Say, it's an original Leroy Neiman painting of the 1992 presidential debates. Whoops, the paint's still wet. Of course, you want to complete your collection of original Neimans, but stealing the picture would be morally wrong. As if collecting Neimans wasn't already morally wrong. You're not quite to the stage where you talk to pictures and they answer back. Yeah, do it to them before they do it to you. This sculpture is a match to another one around here somewhere. You touch it briefly while fantasizing about Sally Fields. Do you think La Costellata is foolish? All their artwork is severely screwed. Down, that is. Uh, pardon me, miss. Do you have a copy of the hint book for Leisure Suit Larry 4? You're going to wear that thing out, Larry. This sculpture is a rare example of the fine carving skills of the now extinct African tribe from the Lac Kanuki region of Mozambique. You already have all the rare African sculptures you desire. Which is to say, none. Well, the mouth is ready. All the hotel room doors are exactly alike. They all bear a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costellata logo and the room number. Oh, Lieutenant, quick, into the...
the closet. Wait, shall I rephrase that? I hope that's not Andrew again. When will he realize your toes are mine? All mine! Sorry, come back when my batteries wear down. Take a door, any door. Don Pardo, tell them what they've won. There's no way that will fit into the keyhole. But close, very close. You see bright daylight at the end of the corridor. You detect a cool chlorine and cocoa butter scented breeze coming from that direction. For somebody who's always trying to pick up things, you don't pick up on things very quickly, do you? Your voice echoes down the corridor. Nobody answers. La Costellata's large, kidney-shaped swimming pool is ringed with chaise lounges and watched over by a handsome young lifeguard. Everything around here feels hot and damp. Maybe that's because you're hot and damp. Everybody's seen one of those before and nobody's impressed with yours. A hedge of thick, waist-high bushes lines the pool area. You slyly bend back the end of a small branch so you'll be able to retrace your steps and find your way out of the maze if you ever escape these virulent pirates. Oops, <laughs> wrong game. You start to take the bushes when a small, still voice inside your head stops you. Won't you please leave those shrubs where they are, so that all the guests may enjoy them? Now, I want you to just stop for a minute and think about what you almost did, and why it was wrong. And later, if you're good, I'll spank you. Hey, anybody who's in those bushes, come out now! Only the gentle breezes answer you. And maybe it was your imagination, but you could swear you heard those gentle breezes call you a jerk. Please don't relieve yourself here. These are old growth bushes. The crystal clear waters of the pool are deliciously inviting. You won't need any of the inviting crystal clear pool water. You speak to the pool, but no magic seahorses appear. Why can't you act like a normal person? Wait until you're swimming? A large window in the side of the swimming pool allows the patrons of the blues bar downstairs to enjoy looking up at the swimmers' nearly naked bodies. It's cheaper than hiring dancers. La Costellata's unique freely floating swimming pool bar has conveniently floated over near the edge of the pool. It's so close you can reach out and touch it, probably without getting wet. The bar should be open sometime soon, perhaps later in the day when you swim your daily laps. The bar is made of the finest imported plastic laminate, but has warped considerably from the heavily chlorinated water. Amazingly enough, La Costellata has covered the bar with a non-slip surface that even withstands belly flop waves. You'd like to order a drink, but that's not the way. A guy would need some way to attract the attention of an underwater waitress. Damn it! The sign above the bar reads, Bar. So much for your sleuthing skills. A cash register sits totally unused at the rear of the bar. If you could check inside, you'd find it empty, but rusted. A small, empty glass labeled tips sits at the rear of the bar. Dreamers. Someone has left an expensive sunglass case lying on the bar. 
From here, you are unable to ascertain its contents. Sneaking over to the edge of the pool and leaning way out, you inquire about that pair of sunglasses lying on the bar. Anybody lose these? Well, guess they're mine now. You have a deluxe sunglasses case that doesn't appear to be empty. It's hard to tell right now since it's still closed. The solution to the sunglasses case is in your hand. You open the sunglasses case. Inside your recently acquired sunglasses case rests a nice pair of designer sunglasses and a cute little white polishing cloth. Hey, nice pair of shades. Perfect for lounging around poolside. Genuine bar nays. These must be deluxe sunglasses. They come complete with their very own cute little white polishing cloth. This cute little swatch of cloth is nearly as small as some of those floss bikinis you've seen on the beach. This tiny swatch of cloth was included free with the purchase of any pair of sunglasses. Tiny? It's not that tiny. There are guys out at the pool wearing swimsuits smaller than that. This locked door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costellata logo and the words Diving and Bungee Tower. You wriggle the handle of the diving tower's safety cage and find it securely locked. You don't want to take the door, but you may want to open it. Hey you, uh, up there, let me in. You need the key. That's hardly an appropriate key. And it doesn't seem to fit anything around here. empty lounge chair. There's nothing quite like the pleasure of lying under a tropical sun on hot, sweaty vinyl. Unless it's the pleasure of tracing the web marked patterns embossed in your back afterwards. You consider lounging in the sun a while, but what if you fell asleep and missed that girl diving into the pool and emerging without her top? Where? Lugging a lounge chair around with you is so gauche. You practice a few of your favorite pickup lines on the empty chaise lounge. Say there, sweet cakes. If I said you had a beautiful body, would that be okay? Excuse me, I accidentally dropped my Congressional Medal of Honor somewhere around here. <laughs> Have you seen it? Va 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 boom! Do those legs go all the way up to the top? Come on, Larry. Somebody may want to use that chair. Darn it. The curtains are drawn and you can't see inside. You attempt to open the window. <sighs> it must be locked. Maybe one of the others is open. That window would be such a pain to carry around. Hello in there. Open up your curtains, will ya? That's strange. There's no response. Trying to make work for the window washer? Curses. Whoever occupies this suite has closed their curtains, preventing you from doing a little creative spying. This isn't King's Quest VI. You can't carry around a window, stick it on a wall, and look through it. Yo! The sun's out! Rise and shine! And hey, open up your curtains. You're being ignored. That's one way to win friends.
Oh, drat. The curtains are drawn and you can't see what's going on inside. You can dress it up, but you can't take it anywhere. Yoo-hoo! Would you mind opening your curtains just an eensy-weensy little bit? Apparently so. Everybody's seen one of those before and nobody's impressed with yours. Fudge, you can't peek inside because of those rotten curtains. There's already a very nice window in your room. You won't need to take this one. Hey, anything going on in there? An angry male voice answers. Not anymore. Keep it up and they'll throw you out of the resort. Of course, if you could keep it up, you wouldn't have to be wandering around here in the first place. A deflated swimming pool float in the shape of a Canadian Highland beaver lies unnoticed and unwanted. The inflatable beaver feels like it is out of air. You grab yourself a swimming pool float in the shape of a beaver. And like all men, of course, you can always use a little beaver. Why would a ritzy resort like La Costalata pass out uninflated flotation devices? I think I'll blow up this beaver. Whoa, Larry, you don't know whose mouth has been on that beaver. You're going to require another source of compressed air. You could wear the inflatable beaver if you were in the pool and if it was inflated. Try as you might, you don't have enough air to inflate your new swimming pool float. You'll have to find some other means. Haven't you learned yet to keep that thing away from strange beavers? a ruby-chested sunbather. Excuse me, isn't that my sunscreen on your back? No, it's Pat's. He'll be back in just a moment. Oh. Well, I'll be going now. You've got that right. This girl's a real looker. She's got adorable freckles from head to toe. Hey, honey, there may be a lot of fish in the sea, but uh, I'm your catch of the day. You? No, I'd have to throw you back for being undersized. What a fox. You wouldn't kick this lady out of bed for eating crackers. Hiya, sweetie. Since you're a sun worshiper and, well, I'm a sun, why don't you come up to my place and worship me? Bug off or I'll kick you where the sun won't shine. Billy D, La Costellata's full-time lifeguard, is fit and trim, handsome and sexy, stylish and hip. He was recently voted Lifeguard Magazine's Best Mouth-to-Mouth -mouth Resuscitator in the prestigious Single Woman category. Billy Dee's well-oiled black skin is soft and smooth to the touch. Just what the hell do you think you're doing? You're as bad as Gary the Tom attendant. Keep your hands off me, okay? Hello. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I'd like to go swimming here. It looks like you need a swimsuit first there, uh, Larry Larry. But feel free to change clothes in our exclusive European uh, changing bushes. They're right over there on the other side of the pool. I'm sorry. I refuse to play match him with an uh, unarmed man. No. Oh. Slammed again. Uh, where 
can I inflate this flotation device? Well, I'm sure I would know. I've got people who do that kind of thing for me. Besides, it tires me. What's that? Have a swimsuit? Hmm. As little as that piece of cloth is, it looks to me like it's still big enough to cover everything you've got, pal. Boy, did they hire rude help here. Hey, just what do you think you're thinking? Why are you making that funny face? You looking for trouble? I got a mind to toss you out of here on your ass. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir. For a moment there, I thought you were one of the townies that try to infiltrate our beautiful private club. I'm certainly not interested in meeting you in your room later, if that's what you're trying to imply. But you could try Gary, if he's working today. There should be a shower in your room, sir. I recommend you not leave a ring around my swimming pool. Welcome to La Costellata's Blues Bar. A full-service bar is available to meet all your refreshment needs. Comfortable seating is offered in a relaxed, contemporary atmosphere. And, of course, the best in entertainment is yours to enjoy 24 hours a day. It feels fuzzy and soft. Rather like your back and shoulders. You can't take that. It's been ergonomically designed to give this room a relaxed, contemporary, yet uncomfortable atmosphere. Hey, everybody. It's me, Larry Laffer. As usual, nobody notices. Sorry, you can't mount that. At least, not now. Plastic palm fronds are beautiful to look at. They're so convincing, one might actually believe that tropical palm trees can flourish while stuffed into tiny pots and stored above dim, smoky bars. You love the feel of real plastic. It reminds you of Helga, that Swedish stewardess you met at the swap meet. You can't take this plant. It's hot glued in place. Hey, baby. Nice fronds. Beautiful stems. Love those leaves. You know, you're my kind of palm. You make it a point never to relieve yourself in public. Because whenever you do, people laugh. The stage is empty right now. How tempting. You decide to hop up on stage and let your star quality shine through. What did you want to take from the stage? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. Whoa, Larry, who died and made you ringmaster? That's not a socially acceptable way of expressing your dissatisfaction with the entertainment. Now that you're up here, the stage looks entirely different. Even less appealing, in fact. From up here on the stage, La Costellata's Blues Bar looks completely different. It looks so... somehow lower. Check. Check. Sibilance. Check. Fortunately for you, the microphone is dead. The backstage area is filled with interesting technical equipment, all of which is beyond your comprehension. There's nothing much to do back here unless you're into ropes and flies. 
That, of course, referred to the ropes that raised the scenery and curtains above the stage. You don't want any of this stuff. Hello? Anybody backstage? Hmm. Since nobody can see me back here... Does it help to get that out of your system once in a while? Coolamundo. This tank looks into the swimming pool. It's like being at an aquarium, only the fish are babes. It's behind the bar. You can't knock on it. All you can do is admire the scenery. It's got thousands of gallons of water behind it. It might be a good idea to leave it in place. I could really use a whiskey. Me too, buddy boo. I'm sorry, but the closest thing we have is sproutberry juice. Nobody in the pool can hear you from in here. You consider playing Little Dutch Boy with the tank window, but fortunately there's no hole to plug. The bar has a plentiful supply of healthy beverages. Poor Sapo Japanese flavored rice near beer, Zim Zitty clear malt wine alcohol free cooler, Dom Perrier champagne flavored mineral fluid, Clearly Utah Salt Flat Sparkling Seltzer in regular or extra flat and salty. And Chameleon Multi Schnapps, the schnapps that taste different on every woman who wears it. If you could reach them, they'd feel just like booze bottles. You'll have to ask the bartender if you can take his bottle. Hey, that reminds me of a little joke. Um, stop me if you heard it. A guy walks into a bar and says to the bartender, I bet you ten bucks I can identify the exact contents of any drink you make. The bartender takes him up on it and mixes, out of sight, out of the counter, you see, <clears throat> a drink made out of half a dozen different liqueurs, okay? <laughs> he hands it to the guy who takes a sip. Aha, uh -huh, says the guy. That's exactly two parts Popinov vodka. One part Picardy 191 rum. Three parts Hiram Wallbanger Road Apple flavored schnapps. Two parts Creme de Secaucus. One part Old Korean War veteran whiskey. One part Glengarry Glen Ross scotch. And three parts Frangela Bulica. The bartender is astonished, you see. <laughs> Why, that's perfect, he exclaims. And he hands a guy the ten bucks. A fat guy sitting down the bar, see. He's watched the whole thing. Now, he slides a glass down the bar and yells, Here you go, buddy. Bet you can't tell me what's in this. Okay, so the guy picks up the glass and he sniffs it gently. <laughs> and then he takes a sip. <laughs> he spits it out immediately and he, and he screams, That tastes like piss. And the fat guy says, well, yeah, sure, but who's? <laughs> I got a million of them. My, what an interesting arrangement of fruit. The bartender here in the blues bar has seen better days. No one wants to tip a guy who only serves non-alcoholic beverages. This bartender is not a man you'd care to rub palms with. Exactly what sort of beverages do you serve here? Hey, I make a superb King Alfalfa, or perhaps a broccoli and non brand name cola. Hey, what about a zucchini wall banger? Yuck. How about a mineral water? Nope, fresh out. Got some pool water though, but it's a little carini. Got a match? That is some right there at the end of the bar, Pally. Help yourself. Uh, no thanks. I've got enough swizzle sticks already, okay? The side of the tub of matches says, for our matchless friends. Funny, that phrase was trite even in the 70s. 
You insert your hand into the bowl of matches up to your wrist and wriggle it around, hoping against hope to find something besides matches. You don't. Oh boy, free matches! You already have a match, let's not be greedy. This kitchen match looks like it should light, if properly struck. You scratch the match with your fingernail, but it just won't light. If only you were a real man. You try to strike the match by rubbing it on your trousers, but polyester just isn't rough enough to start it burning. You did it! This match is ablaze. Be careful. Hey, that's hot! Oh boy, free matches! Oh, how cruel. La Costellata has placed gigantic graphics of extremely fattening foods on their walls while only serving cardboard-flavored health food. There's so little to do in a dining room between meals. Sorry, but this dining room doesn't serve take-out food. Sorry, Larry, this room's for dining, not whining. No, they don't keep meat tenderizer on the tables here. There's no use putting real flowers on the table when these plastic jobs smell even stronger. These flowers are pretty and they do smell nice, but still, who wants plastic pansies? Who'd want plastic flowers? Besides, there are real flowers around this place. Give it to me straight, huh? Don't try to soft pedal me. You don't really need a napkin, since you always wipe your hands on your clothes. A window into the kitchen shows La Costellata's gourmet chefs preparing the next meal in a frenzy of activity. Those chefs are far too busy to talk to you right now. Oversized graphics of junk food is a rather cruel joke to play on patrons of a health spa. Here's yet another piece of cherry pie you'll never get to eat. The burger on the wall is flat and of little use to you. Rather like your Whopper, Larry. La Costellata's salad bar is presently nothing but off-color, half-melted ice. Come back at dinner time and it will be different. Yeah, by then it'll be off-color, fully melted ice. However, you do notice a faint trace of color under one section of the ice. Seeing a hint of color beneath the ice, you dig away until you uncover a fresh orange left over from breakfast. It seems to be in surprisingly good shape. Finding your first experience pleasurable, you decide to play in the ice a little more, but this time you don't even find an orange. A fresh orange, in surprisingly good shape, now rests on top of the salad bar's ice. Orange, you glad you dug around in here? Well, I might as well take this orange. You never know when a guy might want something to, uh, suck on. You were fortunate to find the last remaining fresh orange in the salad bar. You consider sucking the juice out of the orange, but decide you were suckered enough just coming to La Costellata. 
Even though you are getting a little hungry, you decide to save the orange for future use. If you're looking for more fruit, you might try the health spa lobby. These doors each bear a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Castellata logo and the words Kitchen, Authorized Personnel Only. La Castellata's kitchen looks nothing like you expected. There are no chefs anywhere in sight, but there is a large taco truck parked here. While you would like to whip yourself up a good meal, this kitchen is almost empty. There are some garbage cans here, though, if you are interested in dumpster diving. About the only thing you could get in this kitchen would be salmonella. Hey, anybody in that truck? There is no response. It's damp, it's yellow, it appeared right after you peed behind the truck. What could it be? Why look, the chefs that appeared to be working so hard from out there in the dining room are nothing more than a rear projection movie. Why those cheap corporate bastards? La Costellata is supposed to be a health spa, and all they do is feed their customers fast food from a roach coach. And evidently the truck has been here quite a while. One of its tires is flat. Knocking on the truck provides no response. Evidently, Carlos is on break. This tire appears to be low on air. This tire has plenty of high pressure air inside. Having a good year? Grasping at straws now, are we, Larry? You're not a dog. Cleverly realizing the truck's tire is a source of pressurized air, you press the beaver's inflator onto the tire's valve stem. I, uh, hope that was good for you, too. You're just waiting for some joke about a full beaver, aren't you? Hmm. Maybe I could suck the air out of this beaver. Don't do it, Larry. You don't know whose mouth has been on that beaver. That's not of much use here in the kitchen. The kitchen's stainless steel sink is quite deep. Evidently, at one time, La Costellata didn't get all their meals from a roach coach. Do you ever have a feeling your life is going down the drain? There's a handle and some kind of bucket buried in the trash. Of course, digging through the trash is always a good idea in an Al Lowe game. Hey, look! Somebody threw away a five-gallon can of lard. There's nothing left but garbage, but now your hands really smell. There's nothing else in these trash cans worth taking. Five gallons of lard should come in handy if you're planning to do a lot of baking. The bucket of lard feels very greasy and slick. Considering a little self-gratifying Mazzola party? Isn't that just like you, Larry? Always talking trash.
a meat cleaver sticks out of a chopping block. You can't pull the cleaver out of the chopping block. It's in too tight. A feeling wholly unfamiliar to you. This is not another hack and slash game. Not even Larry Kruger, Friday the 13th at La Costellata. This brings back memories. Do you remember the dirtiest line on 50s television? Mrs. Cleaver to Mr. Cleaver. Oh, Ward, you were a little hard on the beaver last night. Four large refrigerators nearly fill the wall. You just can't face taking any of this year-old food. Look somewhere else for what you need. The refrigerator merely gives you the cold shoulder. Four large refrigerators nearly fill the wall. Some idiot left one of the doors wide open. Oops! The dumbwaiter on the far wall is used to deliver meals to the hotel's penthouse apartment. You bang on the door, never noticing the control panel right beside the dumbwaiter. It's too dumb to reply. These buttons control the dumbwaiter beside them. You press the green button on the dumbwaiter's control panel and see the doors slide open. Now, how are you going to fit inside that tiny chamber? This is as uncomfortable as it looks. The only thing you want to do is get out of this sardine can as quickly as possible. It's hard enough to breathe while wrapped up in this position. Talking is out of the question. Besides, there's no one around to hear you. For once in your life, you have no urge, at least no urges, other than to get yourself out of this dumbwaiter. It's a green button. You wonder what it's for. How could you ever find out? It doesn't do anything now, of course. The dumbwaiter doors are already open. But if they were closed, you could just reach out here and press... Hey, wait a minute. If the doors were closed, you wouldn't be able to reach out here. You'd be trapped inside. It's a red button. You wonder what it's for. How could you ever find out? What an open, uncluttered, minimalist decor. You wonder what the rent is on a place like this. The room feels cosmic. Vibes of tranquility and serenity reverberate from the walls. This place belongs to no ordinary woman. Disturbing any portion of this room would disrupt the harmonic synergy of space and substance and unbalance the flow of light against shadow. Besides, you see nothing here you really want to steal. There's no need to talk to that. It speaks to you through its very presence in the room. Piddling on the floor would add an undesirable note of disorganization and incongruity to the delicately balanced interior design. An ultra-modern halogen chandelier casts a perfect circle of light on the table. Think of the thousands of vegetables that gave their all on this table. You don't have time to stop for dinner now. It's a kotatsu, one of those low Japanese-style dinner tables. 
two shoji screens are placed with great care so as to perfectly complement the other Japanese decor and to manipulate the ambient light in a paraphrastic bit of cogistry. Don't move those screens. They're reflecting just the right amount of ambient light into the aesthetically underlit portions of the room. Taking those screens would stretch your leisure suit. Using the only Japanese you know, learned from nights spent trying to pick up chicks in sushi bars, you talk to the shoji screen. Hi, domo arigato. Why not just hold it till later? You are aware that that was a figure of speech, of course. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with the delicate La Costellata logo and the words, private. You try the knob and find it locked. Ripping that door off its hinges is not the way to impress the beautiful woman in the next room. There's nobody here to talk to. If you were to walk over one room, that could be rectified. Yeah, that would impress her. A simple arrangement of three tropical flowers adorns the far wall like a sculpture. The flowers have a subtle sweet scent that you find quite intoxicating. You wouldn't dream of taking the flowers from this woman's penthouse. Similar, very similar. Not in length, of course, but in breadth. The penthouse's living room is sparsely yet tastefully decorated in an oriental minimalist style. One item here attracts your attention, and she's sitting out on the balcony. There's nothing much here to take. Besides, your attention is completely captivated by that beauty on the balcony. Hi, babe. Can you hear me? Evidently not. And a good thing, too. This is one woman who is not a babe. Geez, Larry, not here. A very modern chimney removes the smoke generated by that fireplace. This chimney is hot. It would be difficult to carry around something that long. No, no joke here. Too easy. How unusual! A natural gas fireplace burning with an intense blue flame at a tropical resort, the doors flung open while the air conditioner runs at full force. Obviously, this woman has no financial problems either. Nice thought, Larry, but think of the smell. Three perfect roses rest in individual vases in a perfect example of beauty and simplicity. This must be one fascinating and confident woman to decorate so tastefully and yet sparingly. Rubbing your fingers up and down the rose's stems gives you a little prick. Hey! Okay, okay, maybe you didn't get it from the roses. You wouldn't dream of taking the flowers from this woman's penthouse. Hello, Betty. I enjoyed the movie. One little prick deserves another. A saltwater aquarium is built into the far wall. A very few extremely expensive fish swim lazily back and forth. Don't you fish just hate it when people tap on the glass? This is no place to go fishing. Hi, fishy-wishies. Aren't you glad I didn't tap on the glass? Hey, don't pollute the salt water. Oh, have I died and gone to heaven? 
Who are you? And which department of the spa do you represent? I don't recognize your strange uniform. Are you with the kitchen help? When did they start dressing retro? And why? Are you sure you're supposed to be here? Oh, I don't... Uh, wait, wait uh, actually, that's right. I, I do work for the spa. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Laffer? I'm Shamara Payne. Please state your business here. Um, uh, well, um, I, I, I believe there was some, uh, report downstairs, uh, about the dumbwaiter. Yep, <laughs> your dumbwaiter was written up. <laughs> Have you had trouble with your dumbwaiter? Dumbwaiter? No, not really. At least no more than usual. Oh. Are you just going to stand there doing nothing, Mr. Larry Laffer? Do you always sit here, Shamra, just staring out at the ocean? Yes. Once I led a frenetic life, double-clutching espressos at 6 a.m. power breakfasts, concording my way across the pond. Why, I once even owned an Apple Newton. Wow. But one day, I finally looked at myself in my apartment's mirrored ballroom and realized I may be fabulously wealthy. I may be at the top of my chosen profession. I may hang out with the Cognoscenti. Damn, I should have packed a thesaurus. But am I happy? Well, yes, I was. Quite. But more importantly, does my life have meaning? Why am I alive? What difference would it make if I just checked out? So, in what I felt was an extremely goganish move, I left my penthouse in the care of my servants and moved to this rather deserted island to live a spartan life of contemplation and thought, living off room service and new age music until I can fathom my meaningless life. Rich. Good. Thoughtful. Bad. Shamara is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. And she's not at all shy. Shamara is everything you've dreamed of in a woman, and more, perfect in every way. You feel sure there's no way a woman like her could become interested in a man like you. But that's never stopped you before. You know what you'd like to do. Play your cards correctly, and this just might be the one you get to do. There's nothing you want to take from this woman. But you'd gladly give her everything you have. Don't rush things, Larry. Take it easy. Hmm. Methinks not. I don't want a chance offending this one. You don't dare risk offending this woman. You may never get so close to one so perfect again. The gentle trade winds blow Shamara's hair in bold cascades, leaping playfully back and forth, occasionally covering her shoulders, then exposing their creamy glory. How you'd love to run your hands through that beautiful hair. May I have just one strand of this golden flax? <laughs> I'd like to place it in a locket, hang it from my gold chains, and wear it wherever I go. Of course. As thick as my hair is, I'll never miss one strand. You, on the other hand... May I blow softly in your hair, Shamra? I'd enjoy that. And later, I bet we can find other things to do together, too. Two dark, perfectly matched lines of tiny, silky hairs excite you in ways you've never felt before. Her eyebrows are soft and smooth as velvet. Ooh, I like that. Wanna do it again? How you'd love to take off all your clothes and dive into either of those aquamarine pools she calls eyes. Brushing your fingertips ever so gently across Shamara's eyelids, she shudders with delight. Oh, yes. I love a man who's gentle with me. 
Shamara's nose is as cute as a button. Perhaps if you someday share gene pools, your offspring's noses would only be large. May I gently stroke the side of your nose, Shamra? Yes. I like that. Shamara's ears are tiny, perfectly formed seashells. You'd love to hold her to your ear and see if you could hear her roar. Please, don't stick your finger in my ear. May I whisper sweet little nothings in your ear? Of course you already are. Shamara's lips are full and soft, eminently kissable. You wonder if Shamara's lips taste as good as they look. How you'd love to press your lips against hers. Play your cards right, and you may get to do more than that, Larry. You've always loved women in transparent clothing. Her pants are as thin as gossamer. Hey! Watch your hands, fella. Take her pants? Like in take them off? Nice try, but something tells you a less blatant approach would be better with this woman. How you wish she'd tire of keeping her arms crossed. Her arms are like velvet, only a lot warmer. Say, are you trying to unfold my arms? You may take my hand later, but you may not take my arm. I may need it sometime. Talk all you want. You'll never get her to raise those arms. If you play your cards right, Larry, all this and more might be yours. Let me see if I understand this, Shamara. You're successful, wealthy, and happy, so you gave up everything to sit and think. Yes, Larry. I have everything. And yet, I have nothing. Uh, I don't know. You've got a great pair of tits. And what has your contemplation taught you, Shamra? Oh, nothing really. But lately, I've been wondering about the lack of men in my life. What a coincidence. I'm horny, too. I often think that myself. About men? Oh, your sexual orientation or deviation is unimportant to me. What I seek is the perfect man. Well, that leaves me out. Not physically perfect, you understand? But rather spiritually perfect. Someone sensitive, intelligent, creative, wise. Hmm. I'm out of here. It sounds to me like you're just another self-made, wealthy, healthy, new age, 90s, fast-paced dropout looking for meaning in an otherwise meaningless existence. Why, yes, Larry. That's exactly it. You were paying attention. But can you help me? Can anyone lead me out of this funk? All right. This ultimate babe will be mine. If only I can find something around this dump to please her. No, on second thought, I don't think she'd care for that. <laughs> but what would a woman like this need? This door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costellata logo and the words, Penthouse.